Greetings and welcome to a very special 420 edition of the Vodcast Podcast. Do you know where your weights are? I'm going full beast mode, guys. That's right, you Billy Bumblers. It's time to get physical. Did you get it? See the, the 420s? Yeah. Yeah, let me just put these down real quick. Better put them up first, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Feeling good. Feeling the burn. This is how all my videos are going to go from now on. <laughs> No, but there's a story behind them. Just give me a second. <clears throat> I did not have two 20-pound weights stacked on my desk to show you how impressive these guns are. Oh, no, sirree, Bob. I had them there because they stay in the office now from now on. You know why? Because my friend Frank. You know why? Why else? <laughs> you know why else? <laughs> hey, hey, guess what? Guess what? I feel like a little kid trying to get through this conversation it's mainly because he told me i can't wear sleeveless shirts until i have the guns to prove it pretty much that's what it boils down to and you know what i see that as a challenge oh and i am not one to stare a challenge in the face and tell it well, get down the road and go challenge somebody else i'm a little busy right now i take it by the tail brothers and sisters that's right i am going to be so jacked no, I'm not going to be so jacked. I am just a little tired of not being in any shape whatsoever, in any shape that I can run down the street or that I can, I don't know, throw some cinder blocks around and work on a fire pit. I've been out of shape for a very long time. And I've finally gotten to the point over that hump, especially the weight hump, where it's like when you, when you have a lot of extra weight on, it literally weighs you down. Like going up the stairs is hotter, carrying stuff is hotter. Every, everything becomes an issue. I'm not saying poor me. Like some people have no problem, you know, realizing that they have a weight problem and, and taking it head on, you know, taking it by the tail, taking it by the nose, taking it by whatever they need to to get to where they need to be. Um, and others don't realize what's happening as they're going along. And I think I'm, I fall into that latter category. Up until probably mid pandemic like I was just gaining weight gaining weight uh, I drank every night which I kind of still do but I would also eat anything I could get my hands on candy cookies anything anything like salty it didn't matter if it was a snack and I was sitting around watching television programs as I do it was going in my mouth so as I slowly started taking red meat out of my life and adding water into my life this has been like I don't know. This is insane because it's been like seven or eight months that I, when I, when I commit to something, I don't back down. Like, unless something gets in the way to stop that progress, like something major. Um, I don't think you guys really care about my commitment to working out. My point is, is that my friend Frank and Corey said that I couldn't wear sleeveless shirts unless I had the guns to back it up. And, uh, well, I've been working on it. I've been getting there. And I thought by having two 20-pound weights in the office to either side of me, left and right of me, like I could just, you know, if I'm working on Lynchburg Does stuff, I just grab a weight, just sit there and curl it. You know, if I'm not working on anything, maybe I'll grab both of them, lean the chair back, you know. I don't know. My point being is, by the end of summer, I will never wear sleeves again. <laughs> Happy 420, everybody. Uh... Today is the day that everyone gets together and smokes weed, cannabis, marijuana, whatever you choose to call it. I choose to not use the word marijuana. Do you know why? The history of the word marijuana. Marijuana is a made up word. It's made up to sound Mexican because the government wanted to instill the fear of black and brown people and white folks during the 40s, 50s, you know, even before that, of course. So they made up this word marijuana because it sounds Mexican. If, if, if you want to respect the plant, you should probably call it cannabis. Although most people aren't aware of this, so you can't hold it against them. Uh, there's a great documentary on cannabis out there called The Union, The Business of Getting High. And if you've ever wanted to know the genuine history of the, you know, 
legalization, the, the journey of marijuana through the years up until I think around the year 2000. Uh, it's a really interesting watch and it really gets into, you know, talking about why it's still illegal and how we have, we never got rid of our, our prison ships, you know, we still have prison ships today. They're loaded with black people. They're called prisons. And it's the exact same thing we did, you know, way back when. Nothing has really changed. We just changed the way that we perceive it. It's easier for us to look at it this way. It doesn't hurt as bad. It's, it's not as, as hands-on. But I haven't come here today to get up on my high horse and talk about the legalization. Well, I guess a little bit I have. Uh, you see, Virginia just uh, passed the bill. Northam expedited it and signed it. So as of July 1st, uh, adult male, adult males, that's sexist. Only men can have weed. Now, any adult over the age of 18 can possess up to one ounce for recreational use. Um, and that's a really loosey-goosey law because you're allowed to also cult grow and cultivate four plants in your house or somewhere where it can't be seen from the street or that if somebody walked through your yard, they couldn't take it. So they're basically telling you you have to grow inside, but we'll see how that goes. So in celebration of 420 today, I think I'm going to do a little bit of gardening. Not a lot of gardening. I'm going to pick up some of that uh, Foxfire, Foxtrot, what the fuck is it called? Fox Farm Soil, as well as some Fox Farm Nutrients. That's hard to say, Fox Farm Soil. Fox Farm, fo Fox Farm Soil. How do you guys plan on celebrating 420? Do you celebrate 420? I'll tell you, in celebration of 420, I will tell you about the story of the first time I ever smoked weed. I was, I believe I was 19 years old. I remember I was over 18 because I thought it was a funny thing that I'd had drinks before I was 21, um, but I hadn't smoked weed until I was like 19. It's kind of a boring story. Um, me and my friend Jen had driven up to oh God, somewhere near Boston. I can't remember where her dad was living, but we had to run up there and she had picked up some and I told her I'd, I'd expressed an interest in trying it. And she was very reluctant to smoke with me because I'd never smoked before. And she'd only known me like we met each other through church and she was still in middle school and I was just in high school and we were really good friends. And so... <laughs> I, I convinced her we, on the ride home from her dad's house. Uh, we were living together at the time. We had, it was me and Jen. It might have been me and Jen. It might have been Frank. I don't know. <laughs> People have lived in that house. So we go home and she broke it up and, and rolled a bunch of joints. Um, something that I still cannot do. So uh, we smoked. I can't remember if it was like a whole joint or two joints. Or we smoked a, enough that I should have been feeling something. And, I, and I think I tried to convince myself that night. I was just like, oh, I must be feeling something. I've never done this before. This is the first time. Little did I know that some people don't experience anything the first time, first few times sometimes that they smoke. So we, I ended up buying my own the next day. Um, and we, we split like a quarter of an ounce or something or a half an ounce. I don't remember. And we just sat there. We rolled joints. And, and finally, I was starting to get used to it. I, I don't know where I lost that skill, but it's a skill worth having in this world. Anywho, I digress. <clears throat> and then we traded. So we had all, or maybe she, she might have just rolled them all. I can't remember. I don't know if I had the skill to do it or not. And we lined them up and we went joint for joint. And we took our joints and then we smoked. And still that I never got high off of that whole time. Like I smoked with other people. I smoked by myself. I, I just couldn't get high. And then Bob. Bob came along. Bob is Jen's brother. And he said, we're going to get you high tonight. And so we smoked and we smoked and we smoked. And it was really good stuff. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh... And I got really sick the very first time. And I, I'll never forget going into the bathroom, knowing that there's a good chance I'm going to throw up. Like, I feel just so fucking weird right now. Um, and Carrie Gallagher, a good friend of ours, she wound up this little monkey. I think, it was, I think it was one of the ones that clap and they walk forward. It was just a small one. It wasn't anything big or something like that. It was a wind-up toy. And she opened it up and stuck it in there. And I just knew that that was the, the pinnacle of my horrors that night it was it was over after that and from that day forth i can't tell you nothing has ever been the same basically when i met cannabis my life only got better and better and better and all the lies you're told growing up about how it's a gateway drug or how it'll ruin your life or you know go back to the 50s and watch things like reefer madness and, and what it can do 
to a person's brain. It's kind of like the coronavirus and the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. If something's going to go bad with the consumption of marijuana, you are the minority. You are a small fraction of the population. Everyone should smoke weed and this world would be a better place. That's really what it boils down to. And I stand behind that wholeheartedly. Yeah. I'll tell you one more weed story and then um, and then I'll let you guys go for 420 so you guys can go enjoy the day. Uh, I was... And me and my friend Corey were inseparable for many years in, until we became, I guess, real adults and had to start living life and stuff. But before that, we spent a lot of time together and we smoked a lot of weed together and just had a good time together. We had fun. His uncle needed yard work and we had no money. And his uncle was willing to pay us in either A, cash, or B, weed. <laughs> So we decided to split it, I remember. Um, and I, for some reason or another, I remember working harder than that, than Corey that day, which is a very rare thing because Corey's a hard worker. He He's, nowadays he doesn't do shit because he's in pain constantly from years of carpentry work and living in New England. That'll do it to you. But back in those days, he was a hard worker. And I remember like busting my ass that day and at the end of the day, it paid off. And then... I want to say we walked to the mall or Gary picked us up somewhere between that house and the mall. This story is going nowhere because you, a lot of you may not know these people. But nonetheless, uh, that, was the, that was some of the best days of my life. Weed and friends. Weed and friends would make a fantastic title for a biography for myself. I can't think of two better things in this world. Maybe music. Maybe music, art, friends, and weed. All right. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Thank you guys for stopping by and checking these out. If you guys are loving watching them as much as I'm loving making them, please consider smashing that like button, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Share this with someone you love. And don't forget the bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and take care of each other out there. I'm Jason Oliver, and I'll catch you in the next episode of the Vodcast podcast. Good night, and boy, howdy. <laughs>